One of the challenges in life science and biotech is making the unseeable seeable. Selection doesn't give us a direct visual of the plasmid inside of the cell, as you might already know, but the process gives us something that we can see indirectly, and this works as an indicator letting us know what colonies were successfully transformed. So in this video, we're going to look at selective media. We'll look especially at antibiotic-based selection, find out what phenotypic lag is, how to distinguish between colonies with recombinant and non-recombinant plasmids, and finally, we'll learn about dropout media. Let's start everything off with antibiotic-based selection media. With antibiotic selection, an antibiotic is added to your media to screen your desired transformed cells. Your host cells are naturally susceptible to a broad range of antibiotics. However, your vector will have your desired gene insert that you cloned into this vector, along with a gene cassette that provides resistance to a specific antibiotic. Once you perform transformation and the vector is inside your host cell, that antibiotic resistance from your vector can be expressed and provide resistance to your recipient host cell. Now, once you plate your cells, you would do this on media that contains the antibiotic your vectors had the resistance gene for. For instance, if your vector had resistance for ampicillin, then you would plate your cells on a plate with ampicillin. The cells that are capable of growing on this plate have resistance to the antibiotic, and that means colonies growing on the plate have the vector and were successfully transformed. And then the cells that weren't transformed Formed would be killed or their growth would be prevented by the antibiotic on the plate. What's great about antibiotic selection is that the antibiotics eliminate what you don't want and everything left over is what you do want. There are two things to keep in mind. The first is this concept of phenotypic lag. The second important thing is that even though you confirmed which cells were successfully transformed, you still need to figure out which cells have your recombinant vector versus a blank non-recombinant vector. So let's look at each of these things. First, let's talk about phenotypic lag. As I mentioned, this is the time that it takes between successful transformation and expressing antibiotic resistance. And in case you want a more familiar example, just think of it this way. We've all gotten a headache, and when it's bad enough, we'll take a headache relief pill. It can take maybe half an hour for it to kick in. It's sort of similar with antibiotic resistance in transformed cells. A more technical way of explaining this concept is referring to it as the time delay between gene acquisition from the vector and witnessing phenotypic expression in the recipient host cell. After transformation, cells need about an hour before they'll express that antibiotic resistance gene in the vector and then start expressing that phenotype. So an important tip when doing antibiotic selection is after you do your transformation, culture the cells in liquid media without any antibiotic pressure for about 60 minutes. Afterwards, you should be good to plate them on antibiotic selective media. If you were to plate them on antibiotic selective media right after transformation, depending on the antibiotic used, there is a chance that even your successfully transformed cells would die because they haven't started expressing the resistance yet. With antibiotic selection, the process is going to tell you what host cells took up the vector, but it won't be able to tell you if the colony has the blank vector without the transgene or if it has the recombinant vector, or that is, the vector with your transgene cloned in in the correct orientation. The vector you choose, even before you insert your gene, should come with specific antibiotic resistance. So if your cell took up an empty vector or one that doesn't have your gene insert, it would still have antibiotic resistance because that came with a vector. And as a result, it would still survive antibiotic selection, but the colonies won't have your gene of interest. So on your plate, the colonies growing took up the vector, but the mix will still have cells that have an empty vector, not what you want, and cells that have your recombinant vector, and this is what you want. Colony PCR is one of a few ways to figure out which colonies have your recombinant vector. With this method, you do a PCR using the colony directly as your source of the DNA template, which gives it the name colony PCR. The primers you use bind to the vector. If the colony has a blank vector, you get a PCR product of a certain size. However, if the colony has the recombinant vector, or in other words, a vector with a transgene insert, 
the PCR product will be a different size. Another way to confirm whether a colony has a blank vector versus a recombinant construct is to grow it up and isolate the plasmid from it and then do restriction digestion followed by DNA gel electrophoresis. And then blue-white screening is another approach to differentiate between transformed colonies with blank vectors versus recombinant vectors. But for this, you need to have your gene cloned into a plasmid that offers blue-white screening. By the way, we have a few videos on the topic of alpha complementation and blue-white screening. I'll link that below in case you want to refresh or just to check it out. Now let's look at dropout media for selection. Dropout media is another way of selecting host cells that have the vector. Here, the medium lacks a certain nutrient, maybe it lacks a certain amino acid that would be needed for the cell to survive. But this is where your vector comes in handy. If you have a vector that has the genes to produce this nutrient or metabolite, then when it's expressed in the host cell, the cells can grow on the media that still lacks the nutrient. Now, something to keep in mind is is just like in antibiotic selection, this technique lets you discover successfully transformed cells, but it won't help you distinguish cells that have your recombinant vector versus those that don't. So just like with antibiotic selection, you would need to do some additional analysis to determine which colonies to move forward with. You could do a colony PCR or restriction digestion analysis. Another thing we need to talk about when it comes to dropout media is this idea of oxytrophy. A requirement for using dropout media is that your recipient host strain must be an oxytroph for the metabolite absent in the media. Medium, I should say. I already kind of described oxytrophy, but let me try to give you a more direct definition. Oxytrophy is the phenotype of an organism where it cannot synthesize a particular compound or metabolite that is required for growth, and therefore the organism is an oxytroph for that compound. A question you might have now is, when do you use antibiotic selection and when would you use dropout media? Dropout media can be a good choice if your host strain exhibits oxytrophy for a certain compound and the corresponding vector can encode enzymes to synthesize the corresponding compound. So if you have an oxytroph mutant strain as your host cell and a suitable vector that complements the mutation, then it's ideal for dropout media-based selection. Antibiotic-based selection is a common approach to selection, but there there are times when it might not be wise to use it. The first reason to avoid it is if the antibiotic resistance in a strain later interferes with the intended downstream assays. Another reason to avoid it is if your host is already resistant to the antibiotic you were planning to select with. In this case, you'd either have to switch to another antibiotic and vector with the corresponding resistance gene cassette or use dropout media-based selection. Organisms like yeast are another factor when considering whether or not to use antibiotic media-based selection. Yeast and other organisms inherently resistant to common antibiotics will not work because everything would survive selection. They also can spontaneously become resistant to antibiotics during the course of the experiment. So in this case, dropout media selection would be a better choice. So all of this is just a fancy way of putting a lens on something we really can't see. And we do this by using important properties of our cells and filling in the pieces with a little engineering. It can be a lot of fun when it goes good. It can also be a huge headache when it doesn't, but conceptually it's all just really cool. Until next time, thanks for watching.